children's behavior is often very different than adults. They spend more time indoors. They spend most of their time very close to the ground. And uh, little kids are always putting things into their mouths so that uh, if there are pesticides sprayed indoors, the probability is that they would be exposed to uh, more of those than adults would. For a variety of physiological and behavioral reasons, uh, they're often at higher risk than adults are to contaminants in the environment. John Wargo is Professor of Environmental Policy and Risk Analysis. He's found that many environmental hazards permitted by the federal government have long endangered public health, with the most vulnerable and exposed being children. I became extremely interested uh, thinking about uh, this historically and uh, wondered whether or not uh, there were, there were uh, large-scale patterns at play. Why were children neglected? Why did they face uh, higher risks from air pollutants, uh, drinking water pollutants, uh, indoor air quality problems, uh, in addition to pesticides. Green Intelligence is a book that allowed me to synthesize many ideas that I've developed uh, over the past couple of decades. I think that uh, uh, that was the purpose of the book, to, to ask that question, whether or not uh, 20th century law uh, really was protective of children's and uh, women's health. And uh, the answer is clearly no. We're seeing an epidemic of uh, illness among children uh, that uh, is developmentally uh, uh, and, and neurologically defined. So uh, attention deficit disorder is one good example of that. And also we're seeing uh, similar uh, problems uh, in those areas among the elderly in terms of increased uh, uh, incidence of, of Alzheimer's disease and, and dementias. Uh, thinking about that, uh, one, I think, should think about uh, the, the kinds of chemicals that uh, uh, one is exposed to as they move through their life. And many of these compounds assault the central nervous system. The point I'm making is that, that uh, our nervous systems are under assault from the time that uh, we're conceived until the, the time that we die. And we need to think about how to, how to manage our exposure to uh, uh, these chemical mixtures. And uh, what I came to realize and, and explain in, in this book green intelligence is that, that uh, the indoor spraying of pesticides can lead to exposures that are quite serious and people uh, have the expectation that it's okay to release these chemicals in an indoor environment. So there are a couple of uh, uh, points to keep in mind and one is that many of these chemicals have not been tested to f figure out what their, their fate is indoors. In other words, how long they persist, how long they take to break down, uh, what actually happens to the material that's sprayed indoors. Uh, and this is problematic. Uh, uh, especially for young kids that may spend a large amount of time in a house or an apartment, or schools are routinely sprayed, uh, cafeterias are routinely sprayed. EPA's attention has been directed uh, more than 90% to contaminants outdoors. Uh, that, that, that's something that we need to remedy. Exposure to unregulated chemicals is a huge, uncontrolled experiment. Companies that manufacture hazardous chemicals should be responsible for proving their safety before they are sold. I think that we need, uh, we need international agreement uh, and national agreement among major chemical producing nations. This has been a, uh, a fundamental flaw in our legal system, is the, the absence of, of prior testing. So the uh, number of chemicals in the international marketplace is now close to 80,000. And fewer than 7% of those have been tested to understand their basic toxicity, uh, let alone their environmental fate. So what that means is we, we don't know where they are in our environment, and uh, we haven't tested them to know how dangerous they are. It is now impossible to avoid exposure to plastics. They pervade our homes, our food, our water, and our bodies. Despite the, uh, the, the enormity of, of plastic production, the, the uh, uh, chemical companies enjoy uh, you know, virtual absence of, of regulation and testing requirements. Right now we have an area twice the size of Texas known as the Great Pacific Garbage Patch where uh, the currents in the Pacific have uh, concentrated plastic wastes, the light plastics that are floating near the surface and uh, gradually breaking down and being mistaken as phytoplankton and consumed by fish and moving up the food chain. We're catching the fish and we're eating the fish, but we're also eating the plastics. We need to have some sense of responsibility about uh, uh, the ultimate fate of these products. I think that uh, Yale is a, it's a terrific place to study environmental science and, and uh, also uh, uh, the various problems that we face globally and uh, nationally. So if you want to study uh, uh, human relations with the environment, uh, I think this is a great place to do it.
For more information about the Yale School of Forestry and Environmental Studies, visit environment.yale.edu.